If this is a familiar situation for you, then today's video might come in handy. We're talking about proxy media in Final Cut Pro. Hey friends, Will here and today I want to talk to you about proxy media in Final Cut Pro. If you've clicked on this video then you probably have some idea of what it is and you've probably found yourself in a similar situation uh, that I have many times where your computer sounds like it's going to blow up, you're trying to edit a project and it's all laggy and jumpy, it becomes really hard to manage and proxy media is a massive helping hand in improving the performance of Final Cut and your laptop in general so that you can edit a project, especially when you're working with the larger 4K files that a lot of cameras uh, chuck out these days. But not just 4K actually, it also is important if you're doing just lots of footage, if you've got a really big project, if you're working with multicam and syncing up or if you're doing uh, split screen editing where maybe you've got more than one video playing back at the same time. These are all the sort of things that can really slow your computer down and unless you're lucky enough to have a really high-end computer, which let's be honest, even if you have in six months time, it won't be anymore, <laughs> then yeah, then using proxy media is a really great way. Now, it took me a while to realize that proxy media existed and how to use it. So today I'm going to cover how you can start using proxy media, what it is and how to get it set up and working in Final Cut Pro. So let's jump into my screen and get on with this. So what I've got here is a project from a few weeks ago, uh, not, not important which project it is, uh, any project will do. And I just want to show you a few things, okay? So when you are in Final Cut, if you go to Final Cut and go to your preferences, then you can see in import at the top here, you've got transcoding. Now by default, when you first install Final Cut, it will have create optimized media. Now what optimized media is, is it takes all of the footage that you import and it converts it to the Apple ProRes codec, which Final Cut prefers to use. So this in itself um, will increase the performance slightly. Obviously some people record in ProRes, if that's the case, then Final Cut doesn't need to touch that footage. It's gonna work nicely and edit uh, quite well anyway. If you're filming on most consumer grade cameras these days, they won't record in ProRes. So when you import it into Final Cut, it's gonna create that optimized media. So that's what that is. And generally that is ticked by default. However, what isn't ticked is this create proxy media. So if you tick that, what that's gonna do is when you import footage, it's gonna first optimize it, and then it's gonna create a half resolution version of the clips. And it's those clips which Final Cut will use whilst you're editing your timeline. So instead of it needing to play back these enormous files and lots of them, it will just work with these small proxy files. And this is a real lifesaver if you've got a big project. If I'm just editing a quick video like this one today and I'm shooting in 1080p, then actually my laptop will work perfectly fine. I don't get into any issues editing just 1080 footage. If, however, I'm doing something with multiple cameras, even in 1080, my laptop will start to struggle. And using proxy media in this way just means I don't have a problem at all. So that is how you turn it on, okay? So once you've ticked that, that's all you need to do. And then once you're in your project, in the viewer here, you can say view, and you can switch to proxy media. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna update your browser, so now your, even your browser is gonna be showing you proxy media instead of the full resolution. And you will notice in the viewer, you will notice a slight decrease in quality whilst you're editing. Normally this is absolutely fine and if there's ever any doubt as to whether what you're seeing is poor quality footage or just poor quality as a result of the proxy then you can switch back to see the full resolution at any time. So that is how you then, so now I've switched that over and I'm 
using proxy. I'm now editing in proxy media. Now this particular project, I've already generated all of the proxy files, so that's why they show up. But if you were to switch to work in proxy media as soon as you've imported footage, then what you'll find is in this viewer window, you will get the red missing clip uh, on all of the footage in there because it won't show there until Final Cut has generated that proxy media. So if you see that, don't be alarmed. Your clips aren't missing. They just probably haven't been generated yet. Okay, that's all well and good if you are starting a new project and you want to start using proxy media. If, however, you've got a library full of content, you're halfway through editing a project and your laptop starts whirring away like a jet airplane, then you can still transcode and create proxy media halfway through a project at any time. And the way that you would do that is you would just select everything in your viewer, so Command A, and then you would say File, Transcode Media, and it's gonna bring up this box, and you can see both of these options are greyed out for me because I've already created the proxy media, but if I hadn't created the proxy media, I'd be able to tick Create Proxy Media, click OK, and it would then start to transcode and create all of that proxy media for me. A little side note, with most of the projects that I do, I will use proxy media now. However, it does extend your import process. So instead of grabbing your SD card out of your camera, sticking it into your laptop, and then importing it and getting editing, creating the optimized media and the proxy media can be quite a time consuming process. So I tend to now get all of the footage off my cameras, set up my Final Cut library, import all of my footage, and then go and watch an episode of Game of Thrones or something. Because, you know, giving the laptop an hour just to get on and do its thing, and then coming back when it's all done is much easier than trying to edit a timeline whilst it's still trying to render in the background and create that media. So that's what I tend to do. Or sometimes, you know, I do it of an evening and come back to it the next day when I know it's all going to be done. Another cool thing is if you're looking to just run, like, if you're looking to export a draft of a project, you can export using the proxy media so that it'll keep the file size incredibly small. And if you're in the proxy view like this, if I were to say file and share this project, then what it's gonna do is it's gonna come up like this and say to me that I'm using the proxy media and if I continue, I'm gonna be creating a very low quality export. So if you've done that by mistake, which I'll be honest, I do nearly every single project that I'm editing, I work in proxy and then I come to export it, then it reminds me that I'm using proxy media. So you can then cancel that, change your view here back to optimized original, and then you can then say file share and choose your export as you normally would. So yeah, that is proxy media really small versions of all of your clips, which means that your laptop can handle much better the workload that you're putting at it. Really great for large projects with lots of clips. Essential if you're working in 4K, certainly on my laptop, maybe as I say, if you've got a more high performance uh, computer, then you might not find as much need for it. But even if you don't need it, you probably will see a performance increase in your computer if you start working with proxy media. Finally, because you're creating proxy media, it does obviously take more space on your hard drives. So once you finish creating your project and you're completely done with it, you can delete the proxy and the optimized files. You can do that quite easily by just clicking on the library and saying file and then saying delete generated library files. That's gonna delete optimized media, proxy media, and all of the render files in the library. And once you do that, it's gonna bring up this so you can actually choose what you want to delete. So you can leave the render files if you wish, or just delete the optimized media or just the proxy. It's completely up to you. When I'm finished with the project, I delete all of that. And if ever I open that project again in the future, 
Final Cut can regenerate all of it, so it's not gone forever. Um, so if you do need it. So uh, yeah, that is it. What is Proxy Media? why you might wanna use it, and a few different ways in which you can use it. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel if you fancy that sort of thing, and other than that, I'll see you next time.